Hi, I'm Murray Dooley, president of 3D Connection. What I'd like to show you this afternoon is our devices, our navigation devices working with Adobe PDF, which now supports embedded 3D objects. The great thing that I'm able to show you this afternoon, in fact, is not only our device controlling an embedded 3D object, but I'm going to be able to show you how our device actually works, because the embedded object we're going to be looking at is one of our own 3D navigation devices. So here we have the Space Explorer device. You have it also, you can see on the screen here, you also have the Space Explorer in Adobe PDF. Right now it's traditional PDF, so it's a two-dimensional picture, if you will, of the device that I can zoom and pan with the device. What I'm going to do now is actually switch on the 3D view. I click on the embedded object, and then I actually have a 3D view of the device, which I can manipulate in six degrees of freedom, which is really what our, our whole navigation device allows us to do. But more importantly than that, what I'm going to do here is show you how the actual device works Rather than describe it with text, I'm going to show you by exploring around the device using our navigation space explorer. The first thing I'm doing is switching on the bill of materials here, uh, because in order to explore the device, I need to switch off one or two layers. So what you can see here is I'm going to switch off the top case, which then disappears, which starts to allow me to see inside the device. And I'm also going to switch off the cap, because the cap is really the heart of what goes on here. It's the heart of the optical navigation engine. Again, to give you a view of how you can explore with our navigation devices, what I'm going to do is take you inside the device through the cable strain release here, which has no cable, as you can see. And that's the level of precision and control you can enjoy with a 3D connection navigation device. And here we are inside, and what you can see here is you see this, this myriad of plastic parts and uh, PC boards, and inside is really the heart of what goes on inside one of our navigation devices. So why don't we fly in here? We're going to fly in just through this gap in the window here, and we'll see what is going on inside this device. So the first thing you can see, I'm inside the device, and as I rotate around, you'll see a number of LEDs. In fact, you'll see uh, three LEDs on the top and three LEDs on the bottom as we go down. And that allows us to have our six streams of data. And what you can see as well is you can see these windows here. And let me just take you through one of these windows. On the other side of these windows is what we call a positioning, a position sensitive detector. Let me just slip through here. And you can see this device here. You can see its, its lead frame here. Silicon device, which when light falls in it, determines it, enables it to determine the position. Now what I'm going to do is try something quite difficult here, which is take us actually and look at this window as the positioning sensitive detector actually sees it. Here I'm really dealing with micro geometry. It's quite hard to set up, but we're going to get there. And you can see here you have the LED on the other side. And what actually happens here is if you if we move the device up and down, what you'll see is the light will continue to fall. But if I move the device left and right, in this case, the light will stop falling on the detector. And that's the basic principle of how our whole navigation engine works. Moving left and right, light stops or comes on the detector. Moving up and down, in this case with the vertical slits, light, light stops falling on the detector. And if I go down one story here, I'll actually come down to the second set of three LEDs. And in this case, you see they have horizontal slits. And again, if I move left and right in this case, the light continues to come through. And if I move up and down, the light stops falling through. And again, I can take you through here. And exactly as we had up above, we have three LEDs, uh, three horizontal slits in this case, and three position sensitive devices. Uh, and merging all of those six screens of data together with some pretty sophisticated mathematics, I have to say, enables us to determine the six degrees of freedom through which then you can pan, zoom, and rotate your 3D models.